So here I am with another Saturday update and um, I'm going to be rambling away. I'm going to be drinking a cup of tea while I do it. I'm trying to do everything um, as bad as possible, like shake the camera there. Sorry about that too. The reason the camera is a bit wobbly at the moment is because I'm holding on to it before I zoom it in on the miniatures and therefore it, uh, it's going to wiggle until I uh, put it on its tripod properly. Um, I'm focusing mostly on 15mm uh, 15 mm sci-fi updates but uh, I've got a couple of other bits and pieces to sort of do a show and tell, kind of an unboxing thing as well so hopefully you can uh, stay tuned and watch. Here we go. So you will no longer have to look at my face. Uh, here we go. Right, that's a British cup of tea which I shall remove <laughs> briefly from the frame and uh, in fact I'm going to have a drink of it. So what we've got, uh, starting off these very nice Merc tanks, and I can't remember if I've updated um, a video on these before, uh, but these are the sort of generic Merc 15mm 15 mil, 15 sci-fi tanks from Critical Mass Games in the UK. They're sort of two-piece, as in you get a hull and a, a turret section, and um, very finely made. You can see, obviously, I think these are 3D designed, but they've taken a lot of care to make sure you don't get any of those ridges, um, which you sometimes get with 3D printed. Uh, so they look great, they'll take uh, paint very nicely. I like the sort of uh, generic look to them, sort of near future. And you can see actually from the turret, that to me looks like it's been inspired a little bit by some of the new Israeli tanks, modern tanks. Um, and uh, Again, I just take that part so you can see the two pieces. It's got a nice size peg in there, so you could actually put a magnet on the bottom of that um, rather than glue it in, and that will give you the ability to twist the turret, which will look quite nice. I would airbrush those separately, so I would do the turret separate from there and then magnetize it afterwards. Uh, so when you moved it around, you weren't getting any areas that uh, didn't have any paint coverage. There's some nice detail on the on the wheels, you can see how they've cast it from from the boat from the base. So the base is sort of solid, but of course that's completely hidden uh, when you're gaming with it. So that's a sort of good design for resin casting is to do with the flat bottom uh, where they pour into the mould. And some nice detail on the hatches. There's oh you can't catch that properly. I'm coming a bit closer. You can see various hatch detailing on the back. And on the front there, that nice hatch with the kind of little uh, viewing screens as well. So to give you a bit more detail, we have got um, various different turrets. I think I'm picking up the wrong one, but you can see there. Actually, that is the wrong one. Please excuse me. And I now realise I've lost it. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Um, here's the right one, and you can see metal cast again, you can see that's come from a 3D design uh, because there's some slight ridging on there but the detail is fantastic from the side oh, tank drives on actually that's another item that I think might be slightly inspired by the Israeli modern uh, tanks because they have ridges uh, down the uh, down the barrel as well so I think that's nice, it's got a nice flat end to that uh, turret which looks nice and sci-fi so fantastic little model, uh, great size, good size as well, and I think that's exactly the same model, isn't it? I've got there. Yes. So this is where you get the sort of uh, practical things you can do and change with these. Um, you can put a different lid on the top there. Um, I think that goes on there. Yes. And then you've got a sort of an APC, really. Now, I'm lost. I don't know how that glues on, uh, but you've obviously got a, um, a smaller turret gun, sort of anti-infantry grade of uh, weapon that makes the uh, vehicle nice and varied so that you can switch nicely between being an APC and being a, or an infantry fighting vehicle and being the uh, traditional more tank style. So in the Grunts game you could design these differently using the barracks uh, application to give yourself those different 
um, setup but obviously still using the same hull size and the same armament but maybe with some different modifications on there. So there's those. I'm just going to now uh, have another sip from the tea so please excuse me. Ah, and um, switch over to some of these models um, Clockwork Goblin. So these are Weird War 2 and they're in 15mm scale and I think they're actually very finely made. Um, they've got some bigger vehicles and mechas now in this range but you can see you get that nice kind of iron walker riveted um, look to this and um, it's obviously like his resin sprue there. It's that very fine resin, that sort of paler resin which seems to pull out a lot of details like uh, on the back of it you can see there. So very nice and I think you get a pack of three of those when they're all identical the the main resin component and then you have a set here which I haven't even opened yet but we shall pop that open and have a look so you get a set of arms and I think they're very much in keeping with the resin hull um, part of the same design so you get a very nice sort of it's like a machine gun and the other one is just like a, a pincer hand I wouldn't like to uh, end up between that pincer hand um, there's some other little bits and pieces, a searchlight um, these are like little exhausts that might go on the back sorry you're not getting a view of those and another machine gun so you've got potentially two machine guns on each uh, each Walker, again if you're using the Grunts game you could define those two weapons as two anti-infantry machine guns on the back of this. So I suppose the only thing I might ask for would be something that would be um, a little bit more anti-vehicle or anti-material in terms of weapon but uh, obviously they may well come out with something and I know they've got their bigger versions of these Walkers as well which have the um, have larger weapons. I think one of them actually has a sort of central weapon on their larger version of these, which is more of a traditional sort of three or four inch high uh, walker. So I'm making a, a hash of this now, trying to get those away. And while I do that, I shall show you some other goodies then. So, oh, ah, right, so you've got these um, infantry models. They look like they've got sort of um, sort of powered suits and they've got a nice sort of panel on the back because these are Weird War 2 you could obviously do these in some nice sort of khaki sand colours or, or more of a German Panzer Grey style um, and put lots of damage and rust and smoke marks on the back around those because uh, it would be in keeping certainly with the period and the nice gas masks they've got on there so they're sweet, they're big though that's the only thing I will say about them, they are bigger than what you might normally expect for infantry in 15mm. I'll show you some comparisons actually, if you'll just excuse me for one moment. Rapidly running back towards the camera. Sorry to keep you waiting. Right, I have got um, oh, in the frame, a 15mm. This is actually painted by Space Jacker. I don't know if anybody is into 15mm uh, in the community at all. Space Jacker um, has a Tiny Soldiers blog, which is very popular. He used to live very close to me here in the UK, so um, once we, once or twice, I think we got together, and I picked these up off him after he painted them. He's using those UK um, war bases, MDF base on there. And um, actually talking about someone else in the community, this is a, a model painted by Craig at Critical Mass Games. He's a fantastic painter. I know he's in the middle of a Kickstarter at the moment for a new range of um, 15 mil sort of models. And on there they promise on the higher uh, pledges on that Kickstarter to uh, paint the models themselves and I must say he is a very very good painter so if you are pledging for the painted versions you're going to get a treat when they arrive um, Craig's actually used a penny to base his and I'm now rambling because what I was going to do is show you the scale and the size 
so you can see there what you're getting um, even the critical mass games which tend to be slightly finer detail um, well not finer detail but slightly finer looking as in their legs are narrower than the sort of traditional GZG sort of chunky guys I like them both but um, you can see how big they are for 15 mil I'd actually say you're on the on the way to 20 mil there I'm actually leveling them up with the base um, and you can see how much taller it is now this is obviously some sort of super powered um, kind of trooper in heavy armor which is going to add height to him um, but he is very big I'd like them I'd mix them in anyway it's sort of big um, genetically improved weird war 2 um, super stormtrooper types Germans um, but you can see oh sorry I was going to show these as well these are crime uh, models and just give you the view um, of the size against those as well so I'm just lining up on the edge of the base and you can see I'm trying to do it in a way where you can see the actual height but uh, a little bit taller as you can see nice little weapon on that one there so now they have got some more in that range I've got the US ones so I'll show those off uh, I've got one kneeling down there that's a fantastic looking model so and that's a fantastic weapon as well I love that rounded actually you're not seeing it I'm seeing it but you're not but uh, he's down on one knee and he's got a kind of a rounded looking weapon that's part of his arm difficult to spot but if I can try and get my finger in down on the base there I'm turning it around you can see the machine gun and it's part of a sort of extension to his arm which they've all got um, which I think looks sweet especially the way that one on the end here is sort of holding on to it in that kneeling position really nice dynamic pose which is great because I think these are I think these are 3D design models and you can just see how fantastic that person's done it with the leg coming out the back and yeah, it's the same sprue again there yeah, so you can see again it's like super power armed troopers they match up against the uh, German ones really nicely um, but they are a little bit bigger but then again the heads are the right size it's just obviously because they are um, that kind of um, larger super trooper so put those away I'm beginning to mess things up here sorry right um, yes there are also some zombies I may have shown these before I think I have shown a lot of these before but since I've got the camera out and I'm at it, you can see again the uh, zombies in that, that range. So, just to give you that thing against the art crime model, you can see again they're slightly taller than traditional 15mm on the verge of uh, getting towards 20mm scale size. Well, actually, they probably are 15mm, but they are, they, they're very well nicely proportioned, as in the legs are the right length. They're not squat like um, you'd normally expect. So I don't want to get into an argument about scale because I think those are great and I'd use them in 15mm. Um, but um, they remind me, if anything, they remind me of, I don't know if anybody remembers the micro machines when they used to do um, Star Wars models in the micro machines range. You'd often get, you know, you'd get a some sort of vehicle or spaceship that would be quite small and nothing to do with the scale of the models but in the pack you might have a, uh, a series of characters from Star Wars and they'd very much be this sort of size because the legs would be finer even though they were sort of nearly 15 mil they'd have the finer longer proportioned uh, bodies that you'd see in these and they look fantastic so I'll pop all of that stuff away, including those nice big walkers, which are fantastic. Again, I wouldn't hesitate using these in sci-fi, um, and I'm desperate to get some paint on these so that I can use them in um, the grunt scam as well, and do some statistics up for them, possibly some mods and things that would uh, be suitable for that Weird War II sort of period. Other bits and pieces that I was going to show, I think I had them around here somewhere, or down here, right. More, more tea I think actually just as I get these ah, so what we've got here is a series of very unusual shaped alien style um, 
trees and things. I think you could actually drill into the top of those. Whoops. You could drill into the top of those and put fronds, couldn't you, coming out like ferns. And um, I know you can get some brightly coloured uh, underwater bits and pieces from your local fish aquarium type supplies that you could drill in, glue them in there and paint these up as sort of green or what have you. Now you get those in a set. They come from Critical Mass Games in the UK and I've done nothing with these but the next terrain project I do um, well actually when I say terrain project I'll probably just put these on a group base and once I've grouped them together uh, do some texturing on there then I can pop them onto an existing terrain setup I've got as like a wooded alien wooded area alien flora kind of thing Put that in there oh there's like a little fallen wormy looking one so you could make them look, you could make them look fleshy um, you could make them quite bright colours or what have you I think they're a nice sort of addition to a 15mm terrain area. I think you can make these yourself as well, but um, obviously I think they're pretty low cost from Critical Mass Games, so to save you some bother, buy a couple of boxes of those and you've probably got enough alien uh, flora to add to any size terrain board. Particularly if you put them on a, a, an area base, which has actually a good link there, actually I'm learning to link, to um, basing terrain items. Um, as with this, which is a Critical Mass Games uh, terrain piece. They do well, some of the nicest buildings I've seen actually in terms of 15mm scale. You can see, um, that's good, it's still in focus. You can see there's a whole mix of bits and pieces on here. Uh, this is a metal box on the end there, where I wiggle my finger from GZG. This is like an air filter, it's sold separately from Critical Mass Games. This chunk is actually from Forge World. All it was was a bottom of a sprue piece, and I just cut that off, and that's been glued onto the base as well. And the antenna, uh, sort of satellite antenna thing, there is uh, Critical Mass Games again, although it's sold separately from these uh, building units, which are very reasonably priced. I've uh, found a, a very tiny decal, and again it just adds that little bit when we, when you're looking at it from a long way away you're not going to see that uh, very detailed um, decal on there but certainly from closer up if you're doing photography with your miniatures that would look good I think I might have um, done a couple of things like maybe painted the door a different colour or the handles or something now it's very bright as you can see we've used quite uh, bright colours on there with the red and the blue and this was part of a show game setup I did for the Grunts game, so it was on a ash waste type terrain base. So these were pop-on pieces that we could move around to vary the terrain. And we used, um, you can see all the glue, it looks terrible from underneath, but uh, you can see the resin's been glued on. This is Perspex, um, which is very hard to cut by the way. You can try and like score it and snap it, but Perspex isn't great for that. Um, so we've sanded it down after we've, we've cut that through with a hacksaw. Um, and it's, you know, it's just a nice drop on piece of train. Just some advice for you actually while I'm looking at this. Uh, I'm just going to have a little another drink of tea while I think about that and just show you the model. Ah, excuse me. So you can see that as a terrain piece it's nice to have that sort of set of different things on there just so that when you're um, putting it on the board it's got something a little bit more varied than just a building on its own you know there's the odd canister on the side there's the there's what could be called an air filter some kind of system that works alongside the uh, building itself and then inside um, because the critical mass um, terrain items come with roofs that somehow they've managed to make it so they just fit in just nicely you do have to I think I had to sand along the edge a little bit to trim it up and all I did was spray that's that's the base primer grey on the back of that piece of the roof. I sprayed a kind of a deck tan in there and in fact I'd had this miniature out in the garage for a while and there was a lot of dust inside which I should have cleaned out. I obviously left the roof off it uh, before being sprayed and I should, I should have cleaned it out with some soapy water because it's got lots of bits. But who cares, it's the inside, no one's going to really see that. So apart from the fact you can of course put your 15mm models in there 
Um, you could use them as a target in the game or something, or a surprise attack. Particularly I use this at show games. In fact what I would do, um, because uh, a couple of the miniature companies like uh, GZG were kind enough to give me models that I could hand out to players just as a thank you for playing, um, I would put a little pack in there. So if this was an objective in the game, when they finally got there, I was able to pop it open and say, well done, here's a pack of uh, 15 mil figures. And of course, that started their addiction for them. So um, there we go. You can see lots of different things have been done on there, weathering, washes. It's, it, was, it was kind of speedily done. Um, a lot of the final touches to this were done by uh, my friend Simon Moles, and um, he... Uh, helped in those late hours when we were building up to the Salute show last year uh, where we did a grunts demo and helped get these done. I think I did the ba I did all the airbrushing basically, basically it was airbrushed the base colours and uh, he then did all the washing and uh, fine details, the important hard bits. So there you go, actually um, on that subject though I've got some other one of those to show you just to show you again how adding some detail to the outside of the the base. On this one in fact I gave it the red I made the building red instead of the roof red like I done on the last one again just to vary the colour um, so it was something different on the board. You can see the, the top of this one has some nice venting and things on there. It's just had lots of washes. Also you can probably tell that I don't I don't go into quite the same level of detail as I do with miniatures on uh, terrain like this um, oh, it looks very nice. We, uh, I tend to sort of speed through rather than doing real fine detail. And when it's up on the on the table again, it's uh, it looks good enough from a distance. Now, just to tell you here, I've got um, a section of road, a uh, section of curb from Ainsty, which is a resin company in the UK. They do a lot of 28 mil scale bits and pieces, and I just glued that in there. Those two are from Old Crow in the UK, and they're 6mm scale canisters, but uh, which I painted a long time ago and then just glued them on here. And these two are sprues, again, resin sprues for some other models from Forge World, and they were just in my bits box, and they happen to look like sort of concrete bollards. I think, again, it just adds something to that base, um, in addition, the nice sort of mini detail on the decal over the door and um, you can see we've put the same air filter system on here which I did in that blue. I don't know what it was but I, I love um, when I see rust on things of this pale blue colour so uh, that's why I went for that pale blue even though it's quite striking. Uh, you do see things painted that sort of colour around and um, that's what we went for and again another chunk of sprue from Forge World that looks like a piece of concrete. Uh, that wing on the back there is metal and it's a piece from um, uh, Old Crow and that leads me again a nice link onto the next uh, model which was also used at Salute last year. I can try and drag this out. This went on our ash waste terrain and you can see in there is a piece of well two last cut sections from Games Workshop's crater uh, terrain and then a load of like filler and extra bits and of course here we put some rocks and we put them in at an angle to look like they kind of burst out there as well so it looks more natural and then on top of that we have the grand reveal the old crow um, I, think they've got, they either call, I think they call it a lander old crow lander um, which is a nice model we've used that US Army olive uh, green which I did as a single airbrush over the whole thing and then this is Simon Moll's uh, work again where he's just rusted it up churned it up with lots of little bits along the edges and, and we've done um, Badab Black I think we used as a wash on there and then Simon would have done some dry brushing over the top of that with just a simple black uh, for the um, canopy glass there so we used that as an objective, it was a handy um, piece of model and um, I think it looks quite nice actually as a finished product and that wing that you saw on the last piece it wasn't from there but it was a, a wing from I think it goes on the back or some section on here it may have been part of the wing actually I can't remember so that's it that's uh, another nice terrain piece handy use of that perspex again on the bottom 
keeps it really hard, it's not going to warp, it's not going to be like MDF and taking water, um, so it lasts forever. It's had an airbrush of, um, oh, uh, since I'm always talking about this, which because I love it so much, um, Tester's Spray Lacquer. So that's that's finished this off nicely and protected it for sort of war game show use. Um, so there we go, I've just got that quick spin, you can see it's a nice terrain item. Great little objective if you had a crashed uh, vehicle objective that you wanted to use. Uh, just a nice idea to use in a game. So there we go, put that Tamiya away. And uh, put that guy away. Right, so we now have uh, now on to an unpainted uh, piece of uh, terrain model. Uh, not a piece of terrain actually. So I probably went a bit loud then. Ah, oh, quick bit of tea just before I go on. Great, so Bandai kits. Well, these are very uh, popular sort of box opening um, videos on YouTube. Very often people will get new sets from Bandai and um, open them <laughs> in front of people. We all like that sort of pleasure, I think, of the grand reveal. Um, I don't always enjoy it, especially when, have you ever seen those videos on YouTube where people open a new mobile phone and they spend ages pulling apart every single little little tiny bit of cardboard or foam packaging in there, they take it out. That is really boring to watch. Really boring. This is much good, better. <laughs> so do have a look around YouTube for Bandai um, scale models because these are fantastic um, if you see them painted up which is what I'm going to do with them. They're 1 uh, 1 1 4 4 scale, which means they are actually smaller scale than traditional 15 mil, which is near 1 1 hundredth scale or thereabouts. So these should be smaller, but I think they're perfect scale and size up brilliantly for 15 mil gaming. So I will do that tr uh, re grand reveal now for you um, by opening the lid. So I'll take the lid up and you can see on the side what you're going to get in terms of the model. Nice weaponry there, shielding, traditional Japanese fare. Now what's interesting is that you can see him also in this um, sort of flying platform which I have also got so I'm going to show you that in a moment. But it's good for any uh, scale, or any models in this scale in terms of these uh, mechas. Uh, can all use this flying base if, if you so wish. So now inside, uh, you just have all the various little tiny packages. Now the way the Japanese instructions work for these is that every sprue has a number and then a tiny list on there. And so when you're building it, you're rather than unpopping every single piece and trimming it off the sprue. What some people do in terms of following the instructions is literally build step by step and then you, you cut off and prep every piece as you work so you know where they go. Obviously if you're a bit more experienced you could cut everything off in one go but then you've lost the numbering sequence so you, you spend some time sometimes having fun thinking how how does that piece fit to that piece when, when you've lost the reference number from the sprue so it's handy having the sprues with the numbers on. Um, so you've got things like the hands in there. These are all interior pieces um, which is why the models are poseable. Now if I'm going to use these for 15mm gaming I obviously I'm not going to glue all of these in. I will still give them some poseability but I'll probably um, glue them to a metal base so that they are you know stable and then you can then still move the arms and other bits and pieces around once airbrushed. They pre prep the um, model with, uh, obviously they have these, some decals in there, some of them are proper decals, some of them are stickers, uh, I wouldn't usually put stickers on like these ones because um, oh, obviously they look more like toys then when you've put a silvery sticker on them than if you'd actually airbrushed it. They do of course do other things like some sections on the model might have an eye or some sort of light. And again, you can see nicely, I don't know what technology they've used there, but on the sprue you can see they've got um, some sort of eyepiece or light already in the clear plastic, which is fantastic. And obviously all the pieces here are colour coded, so you can put the model together without even painting it. You just put it all together as a sort of a chest piece, or no, that's actually a back, back side piece, I think. 
um, with the different color coding. So it looks quite attractive once it's put together, uh, even without um, doing any painting. So there's just more bits and pieces in there. Um, we see a sprue with the uh, weaponry and just more panels again so the weapons in a light grey and these look like top bottom feet or something in here and there's that one I showed you earlier which is the sort of interiors of the um, ankle joints, knee joints, elbow joints and shoulder joints and things that give you the flexibility to pose the model. Finally in the box is the uh, instruction set so you can see how, how cool he looks that back in. and this is what I like doing is just sort of showing some of the, the finished results now that's actually um, not painted at all these are just kits that are put together so they're showing you what you can do these bases are usually well these bases are sometimes available in the kits uh, this one looks like it comes separately and you can see on the base of the foot where the different colored bits of plastics click together on these they provide already that nice um, toned, different tone look to the model so you could get away without painting but personally I will airbrush these um, and again there he is with that various different poses that you can do it's got quite a wide apart foot stance there but when I put this on a base I'll put it on a sort of circular metal disc base, a large one and I'm with two minds either to glue the feet down or to put a sort of metal rod up to the middle so that and paint that black so it sort of disappears and that would give you the flexibility to move the um, the legs around without them being glued to a base but obviously I like giving it the base because it gives it that grounding in wargaming um, to match the rest of the sort of 15mm sci-fi that I've got so there he is, there's the um, RGM 96X Jester um, Special Operations mobile suit Oh, you can see there the, the eye actually if I pull it together in there so you can see that piece of plastic that's one bit I wouldn't airbrush actually when that goes in I'll leave that as a piece of plastic so that's very nice get back on that. I've got so many projects on the go this is probably going to be months it's probably a summer project I've got a couple of these different models to do and just a reminder again anything over the one slash 144 scale in Bandai size models is going to be very big and probably but like a 1 one hundredth scale one is going to be very tall, a big project probably wouldn't fit in properly or that easily with a 15mm uh, sci-fi game whereas this size does I think it's a good scale for the 15mm uh, game finally just to relieve that throat of mine just as I bring in the other model. Sorry about the light on that. And this is the, well, it's an unusual name, Base Jabber. I want to say Jabber the Hut. Uh, Subflight system. And um, anything, if you look in the middle there, you can see the oops, cockpit area on this flying thing and you can see that would be suitable for 15mm you can imagine one pilot in there piloting this base station it's got some nice intakes uh, yeah some nice intakes on the front there and when I show you it you can see it's got some nice exhaust as well now I've got a friend Jonathan uh, Rogers that wants to make these into just 15mm drop ships and I think he's got a good idea there because they are a nice bulky uh, bulky size simple kit um, you can see this is the underside which you can't see from the sort of front of the cover of the uh, box there very nice um, well exhausts maybe underneath or maybe jet thrusters to allow the landing we've got the side pieces which obviously they come together and this is the top of the cockpit section and then inside the second pack uh, gives you the uh, sort of base section as well uh, you get some legs there too, sort of traditional style, and some fins and things for the various different sides that go on there to give it extra detail. And there's there's the cockpit. And you can see the the glass along the front panel of the cockpit there, and probably 
you know, if, if you said this was had one pilot in there, you could see that a 15 mil guy could sit in there quite comfortably. Um, although you don't have to have anything like that exactly correct, it's uh, it's not bad. So what do I want to show you on here? I'll show you what it actually looks like without the what it looks like without the figure on the top. So there we go. In fact, this base is separate. Classic. I don't want to say classic Japanese, but that quite happens. Quite often happens when you buy these sets. They show you something on the cover um, or something that looks good, and it doesn't come with the model. So if you need, if you want that base, you have to buy those separately. But they're not that expensive. These, I think, actually as models are probably. Um, let's have a guess. I think they're around about twenty, twenty-two dollars or fifteen pounds each, which is amazing for the amount of detail you've got on there. And you can see, I love those. Um, intakes on the front. I think they paint up nicely with some sort of staining or air staining along the edge there as well. Um, let's have a dig in there so if there's something colour that you can see on the side. Um, you can see again with the guy on the top of it there. Now I think actually with that base section if you're a little bit creative you, and you could get rid of those handles and you could do something, you'd fill some of that in. Uh, with a piece of plastic card, or even leave it as is, as, and put sort of 15 mil models in there. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen the computer game. I think it's called Killzone. Um, the guys actually drop in on things like this, like a platform. And um, excuse me. So they drop in on that platform and um, go straight into action. So you could have something on there where it just takes the models um, on the top, drop ships in and the guys come running off. Uh, it also off there's, uh, it offers potential for conversions for 6mm gaming as well if you wanted to cover the top up or even line tanks up there in some sort of crazy um, dropship platform where vehicles come lined up in little rows and then drive off the back into battle after it's come down. And obviously the under undercarriage, which you can't see when you see the model there, but this piece that fits underneath has that sort of look that it's got that uh, down thrust uh, which would allow something heavy on there to land. And there's the base unit again and you can see again nice fine detail and that's where those handles are going to go in on the front there. So nice model kit. Sorry, crunching noises now as I put that away. And there's the artist's impression of the final model. Again that will airbrush up nicely. Tamiya's um, fine grey primer as, as a base and then go on there with any kind of uh, colours. I think you'd probably need to do some masking on the model to get things like these details done. But obviously you could choose any colour you wanted for it. And of course, you know, I'm talking about all these different ideas that you could use for this uh, with 6mm or 15mm scale, but you could just use it for exactly um, what it's used for, which is to deliver a mecha on a flight base to somewhere in the game and um, I think it's going to look amazing if you use it for that purpose as well. So I've got a couple of those to do, I know Jonathan has as well for conversion, so nice model, reasonably priced. Um, have a look out there, make sure if you're into 15mm gaming you have a look at some of these Bandai kits and do some browsing. They're not always the right thing because um, they're from a different sort of world really, the whole um, model, miniature, mecha style builders are in a don't always cross over that much with the gaming um, world, but uh, certainly worth having a look around to see different things. Um, so I'm going to stop rambling now because it's been going on too long. Uh, yep, there I am. Uh, so just finishing up now and seeing how terrible and tired I look. But uh, thanks for listening and uh, please subscribe and come back again. Cheers.